My primary goal for the F3335 has always been to make it look like a show car, a car that people couldn't help but talk about, either in a good way or a bad way. And up until now I think I've done a pretty good job. The performance on the other hand is not so hot, and while it's something I wasn't going to focus on, I kinda changed my mind. This car needs the sauce. What we have on the table here is the all new top mount single turbo kit for the F-Series M55 from Speedtech. This is one of the very first kits available, so I figured I'd make a video for you N55 guys, because this is a relatively affordable kit that is reliable. Speedtech has been gaining a bunch of momentum lately, like almost everybody's talking about them because of the price point and the quality that you get, so I had to give them a shot. Here's what the exhaust manifold looks like. It's made out of cast, very robust, very clean, very good looking. This is definitely one hefty piece. I don't think reliability is gonna be a concern long term. It seems like it's built to last. After inspecting the manifold for a few minutes, I did notice that this looks almost identical to the N5401 that Speedtech offers. The only difference is that this seems to be deleted right here. For turbo option, I decided to go a completely different direction and the precision that I normally run on my cars, I went with Pulsar. This is a 5855G. I heard it's a very solid turbo, very comparable to Garrett. Decided to go with this one in particular, one, the price point. Uh, it's also a ball bearing turbo, so it spools up pretty fast, and I'm able to make the power I wanna make with the F30, which is around 550 to 600. I think you can make up to like 700 horsepower to the wheel with this one, so that's more than enough. Since the car is gonna have an external wastegate, I went with Turbo Smart, which is normally the go-to every single time I have a turbo kit system on any of my cars. And for the blow off valve, since I'm a big fan of what the E90 sounds like, I went with Tile. We have the down pipe, charge pipe, and I believe that's a silicone outlet. And here we have all the miscellaneous parts that you need to install. Apart from wanting to add some power to the car, I also wanted the engine bay to look just as aggressive as the exterior of the car. Just imagine, wide body kit, aggressive wheels and stance, and then you pop the hood and boom, a big turbo. Guys, I'm gonna have this turbo kit linked down in the video's description. Make sure to check it out. I think this is gonna be a game changer for the N55. Unlike some other turbo kit upgrades, Speedtech makes it super easy when installing. Not only do you get everything you need to make the conversion, but you also get detailed step-by-step -step instructions with pictures specifically for your car. That's a win. Nothing better than being underneath a BMW and seeing zero oil leaks. Maintenance first, boys and girls, maintenance first. Ali here just uh, swapped out the motor for an S55. Yeah, oh. and the, the turbo install complete. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going different stop. location turbo, I don't think you need this. No. So it's for sale. It's kind of crusty, but it still works. 100 bucks. Comes with a mass airflow sensor. Does it? Yeah. Okay. It you comes with that. <laughs> comes with an. <laughs> One thing to note, this kit isn't as straightforward to install if your car has the M Sport package just like mine. As you can see on the left side of the engine bay where the turbo kit gets installed, there is not a lot of room. There is an additional oil cooler thermostat that non M Sport variants don't come with. In a nutshell, you have to delete it or relocate it if you can find a way to do it. We just chose to delete it as we didn't think it would make that much of a difference. So now we're moving on to the bottom section of the car. The one thing that I'm super excited about, the AWE full exhaust with the mid pipe and the rear section already sounds really good with the stock turbo system. I could only imagine what it's gonna sound like with the big single upgrade. So there you have it guys, the piece of crap PWG Turbo from an M55, which is in really bad shape. Wait, get rattled. <laughs> and it's gonna be replaced with this one. PWG is just not good. It's old technology, and then this one's gonna move everything externally, so we're good to go. Curl it for me, Ali, curl it. Uh, no, one hand, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, son! I'm a weak <laughs> Step one. You have to put the wastegate on. But don't put it on tight. Just put it loose so you can twist it like this. Also, 
can't forget the, the water ports and vacuum ports. So we have these two right here. Since the manifold is gonna sit like this, we have the ports facing out so we can put vacuum lines on it. This needs to be just snug because the dump tube is gonna go right here. In our case, it's gonna recirculate back into the exhaust. This is gonna be heavy. Oh yeah, also don't forget to install your gaskets. If you guys wanna make this process a lot easier, drop subframe and there's you know less stuff in the way. It's on. Wow. He didn't even need my help. Maybe like take out the nuts out of the box or bag. That's my job today, guys. Just gonna take these nuts out of the bags and hand them over to Ali. Nuts out of the bag. So he's adding these nuts here to the bottom side of the manifold. Once we lower the car, we'll add them to the top of it. It's done. Obviously guys, the turbo is gonna be a little bit lower. The engine is raised at the moment. So that's why it looks ridiculously high right now. But if you notice here, downpipe will actually sit just like this. <laughs> <laughs> and we're just gonna cut right here, teardrop, call it a day. Perfect, yeah. installed. Perfect. That sits nice and tight. That's how we like it. <laughs> since, uh, since we did take the water pipe off, it is a good idea to replace the O-ring on it. You don't wanna take it off when the whole kit is back on. <laughs> that's gonna suck. We're also replacing the water pump while we're here because that's another thing we don't want to have to do after the kit is installed. You do want to put some silicone grease on all the O-rings that you're inserting back into the block because you can pinch it, rip it, whatever. It's just safe to do it because uh, you don't want to take the apart after you do everything. No. Because it's not fun to take <laughs> things apart. Depending on what front mount intercooler you guys are running, Speed Tech will provide like the, the right parts to get them to fit so it can change based on the setup that you guys are running on your car. And once you get it all connected, this is what the charge pipe should look like. Just like that. Since we did decide to delete the M-Sport thermostat, we had to purchase non M-Sport lines so the setup can work properly. Yes, look at that. All the lines are on. Went ahead and pulled out the CSF high performance radiator, which by the way, if you guys don't have one of these installed on your BMW, you're missing out. Originally, we thought we'd have to delete the auxiliary water pump that helps pump cool into the auxiliary radiator, but we later found out that we can make it all work with a bit of creativity, of course. And we're pretty close to getting the first start once we get oil, of course, since we don't have that. A lot of it happened off camera because it kind of took both of us. Dump noob is on. Which recirculates into the exhaust, so it's not really open. Put the lower, put the lower down pipe on first. Now I need to get this guy. All right, before we actually start the car, we're gonna prime the turbo. Let's go. Okay. No battery. And the battery's dead. Take two. <clears throat> All right, just connected the battery. I totally forgot that uh, I disconnected it when working on the engine bay. concern that I have and that's heat management. The turbo kit did not come with a turbo blanket for the hot side of the turbo and I do got the OEM plastic valve cover. Don't want that to melt so I'll definitely gonna buy one and hopefully that's enough. There's a lot of stuff that happened behind the scenes and not on camera, and no better person to explain it than this guy right here. <laughs> Keep in mind, guys, this is like the very first kit of this kind from SpeedTech, so it's somewhat of a prototype, so we had to do some things, plus I had that M-Sport situation, so take it away, sir. They had the bottom mount kit for a while, and this is their first, I guess, top mount kit for this chassis. With M-Sport cars, it sucks because of the thermostat right there 
you have to delete the thermostat. When you delete the thermostat, obviously you have hoses that are just open for coolant. So there's two coolant hoses and there's two oil lines that have to be swapped or you know rerouted where there's no coolant leak. So this is the first thing. OEM, not M Sport oil cooler lines that just go straight to the oil cooler instead of going through a thermostat, whatever the hell. So yeah, originally it was the auxiliary, whatever oil cooler, to the thermostat, then to this, and to that. And this is another thermostat again. So the thermostat had to be removed and then you have the auxiliary water pump right here. So M Sport models come with the auxiliary water pump because you have an auxiliary radiator here to help the main water pump push the water the coolant through you got to have auxiliary water pump when you have that one of the lines goes to the thermostat and it comes out and goes to this guy right here up front whatever other other radiator what we had to do is essentially bypass the thermostat that was on there and then connect it to directly to the auxiliary water pump. Auxiliary, yeah the auxiliary one you don't have to do anything with the main water pump you only have to do stuff with the auxiliary water pump. If you look up diagrams on real OEM, you should be able to figure out how to loop it where you don't have a coolant leak and it, the coolant system functions properly where it circulates in the correct direction and whatever, whatever. That's one. Two, you have the McDonald's straw here that goes to this side where turbo sits now. So the expansion tank, speed tank gives you brackets relocated to this side. So right now it just has a temporary hardware because here there's a fan shroud, radiator support, whatever it is. So it gets sandwiched in between or on top and then you just put the bolt in. If you have an M4 car, this is... This is tough. Yeah. It's hard, but it's not hard. It's just a lot of work. The intercooler piping fits fine. It clears the water pump and all of that stuff. I mean, the fitment of the kit is pretty good. Speed Tech does tell you to move this wiring harness over to that side. I didn't do it because, I mean, we have technically decent amount of clearance. We'll see. You would need a turbo blanket because this kit doesn't come with a turbo blanket. And if you want to run a filter, you have to buy your own filter. And then also this positive cable is usually pointing down. What we did was we just took off the 13 and pointed it upwards so it's not touching the downpipe. You can bend it out of the way or you can just flip it. We're gonna see how the cowl thing fits and then go from there. If it doesn't fit, then we'll probably just bend it down a little bit to get it out of the way. All these coolant lines, if you opt for water-cooled turbo, you're gonna have to run all the coolant lines. And when you do that, I would highly suggest tightening all the fittings and everything before the turbo goes on. Route all the lines up to the turbo area. So all you have to do is like connect this and this. Besides that oil feed and drain line, those are like self-explanatory as far as every kit. The instructions that the kit comes with are pretty decent. There's some things like deleting the coolant lines. They don't say anything about it and how to do it. So that's the only thing. Uh, you're gonna have to figure that out on your own. Or you can just reach out to Speed Tech and I'm sure they'll help you out. I'm gonna make sure I relay this information to Jeff at Speed Tech so he documents it. So when anybody asks, he has the answer. Everything does fit good on most of the stuff. The only thing I can think of is like this area that's like kind of tight. But then again, that's not related to a turbo kit, really. It's related more to the car than the turbo kit. But as far as the turbo kit, manifold, downpipe, to the exhaust, wastegate, all that stuff, pretty, pretty easy to do. We haven't installed the charge pipe or the blow off valve yet, but wanted to get most of this on video for you guys to see and hopefully get excited about. And I think we'll continue in the next video off camera. We'll tighten things up, connect all the necessary stuff to start tuning this car. And then I'll see you guys in the next video. Make sure and like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really does help out the channel. See ya.